five years, for the first five years of my life. And, uh, well, when I was at ten years old, they took me off them because I had a liver hemorrhage. And they found that was the cause of the problem. And what's um, your illness called? Fanconi's anemia. It's something to do... It's a very rare bone marrow disease. And did Mummy tell you about it? Yes, she did. And she she um, helped me to um, get used to my problems and helped me, gave, gave me confidence and when I was down. And uh, I just went on from there. When you thought that you were going to die, Garvin, were you frightened? At first I was very frightened, yes, I must admit. It was a very frightening thing. How um, do you feel about it now? Much better. I'm... I... I'm... Well, I feel sort of almost as if I want to go there because I believe that there's a life after death. What do you believe that life is like? I believe that life to be um, joyful, happy, no pain, complete suffering over and done with, just complete joy and happiness. And uh, I believe in a Christ, a loving Jesus. And this loving Jesus, who I love and who I think to be a very special person to me. He's a special friend to me. And he's always got his arms outstretched. I always believe he has his arms outstretched to me whenever I'm in trouble. Garvin, is making your communion important to you? Yes. And it was a very joyful experience, my first Holy Communion. And meeting Christ in Holy Communion, it, I found was a great joy and very sort of mysterious, very um, peaceful and it's a, it was the only time I could seem to talk to him about my deepest problems and uh, have a really good talk to him about it and what I felt and ask him for his help. And he always answered me back. But to... And my way of praying is just praying with an open heart to him. So does I get the open answer back? Yes, it's, it was a very important time. And my very first time was extremely, the most happiest day of my life, I think. That very first day I took it. And uh, his coming to me was very special. So there's a lot to thank God for? Yes, I thank God an awful lot for, for this gift he's given me. I mean, it's, it's very special because it's actually God and man sitting at table sharing the banquet, sharing his gift, his only, his gift, his most precious gift, his son in the uh, Holy Eucharist and it is a very special gift and I always try and get down for that gift and I always thank him for it every day. What do you think happens to your body when you die? I will leave it behind. This is only a reflection. This is only something, a sort of tag to say, this is Garvin, this is me. So that we can recognise you? Yes. And then the real me, that's uh, when I die, that reflection will be faded, left behind. And the real me, that, that's in, that inner self me, will be out of that reflection and will go up to God. And uh, it, I always believe that it's just like heaven explaining that to, as Joe God says to you, shut your eyes and that and you just go to sleep and then the next minute you open your eyes and you'll find you're in a a lovely place just a 
so beautiful that you want to stay there and be with Jesus forever. And to, and all my friends, or some, most of my friends who I knew down on this earth, uh, that's how I believe have gone to God. And when I, and I hope that when, that when my time will come, I shall see them and go up and say hello to whoever I lost. Like, um, I never saw my grandma, Grandma Doherty. And I hope to see her in heaven and my grandpa and, uh, my, some of my aunties and, uh, m my uncle Christy, who I used to know down here very well. And, uh, I'll meet all those people back up there. And how do you think it will be with the people you leave behind? Will you feel very far away from them? Yes. And separate that, from them or not? I will, f it's very difficult, but, um, I believe that Christ will look after my family and whatever needs they need, I, I, I believe he will provide for them and I shall always look down on them if I, if I go before them. Thank and you. I shall always look down on them and always be there and it's like where, where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. And I will be there in the midst of my family. They might not see me, but I'll be there watching them, looking after them all the time.